Welcome in, everybody. Glad you're with us. Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Tampa Bay Rays going up against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And we'll be back with the first pitch right after this. Just about ready to roll. And towing the slab in this one, Paul Steens. Singing, he's been outstanding and should be fun to watch. Well, when you have a guy that can limit the opponent to very little run production, you have a great chance to win a ball game when he takes the mound. He's just having an outstanding season so far. You hope he can maintain it because if he can, he'll be in a nice conversation at the end of the year. Okay, all set to go. And now the DH, Yandy Diaz. That's towards center. McCutcheon has it sized up. And it's caught for the out. All right, let's take a look at the Rays lineup. Getting guys across the plate, not exactly a forte for them this year as their offense is in the bottom third of the league and runs scored. Boogie becomes extremely frustrating, and then what happens is guys press, especially in run scoring opportunities and situations. And on top of that, I mean, you really make it harder on your pitcher. He feels like he's got to be perfect to go out there and win a ball game, or at least to put the team in a position to win a ball game. So they've got to figure out a way to relax, get those runners across when they have them on, and especially when they're in scoring position. Blows the high he passed him. That's a strikeout. With that kind of velocity, an elevated fastball, even if it's still in the strike zone, can be tough for hitters to get on top of. Two outs, base is empty. Isaac Paredes now. And yeah, there's a ball. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Left field pretty well struck. That's back. That's long gone. His 11th of the year. It's 1-0. He absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer. And you can see that's what he expects of himself. At bat after at bat, he's that confident. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit, spit on some other pitches in this at bat, was very patient, and it paid off. Josh Lowe, the next to hit. Two down, nobody on. Fought off foul. Left hand hitter waits. And yeah, that's a little bit high. And yeah, that's ball two. It's a good take. That one ran inside, almost got him. Two outs. Good job to fight that one off. And that's ball four. One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. Swing and a ball popped up. Gonzalez hauls it in to end the inning. And the Rays get one on a solo shot. It's now 1-0. Back after this on the show. Back here in Pittsburgh. And today's starter, Zach Eflin. Chris, what are you looking for from him? Yeah, and his whip tells you he's been pretty effective this year on the mound. I mean, opposing hitters having a hard time getting on base and then being able to really distract Four him and do damage in terms of getting around the base path. So we're taking the mound. This is a guy you want out there if you're his teammate, and I expect him to be good in this one. And a swing and a miss. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good, and then... By the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. That one not close. And a full count now. Kicks and deals. That one misses. 
So a leadoff walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Ryan Reynolds here. Just missed. And another ball. Chris with that distraction and a speedy guy at first. He's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. On the ground, a second might be two. Rosario won. Throw to first, but he beat it. That is good. Not shortstop. Oh, yeah. Here's O'Neill Cruz. And a pitch. Keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. Great. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's two away. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Nick Gonzalez, the next pirate to hit. And a pitch. Rudder takes off. Cut on and miss. One ball. Throw to second. <laughs> Out there. And that ends the inning. Well, trying to get into scoring position, but a great catch and throw to end the inning. That's the way to pick up the pitcher. Here at PNC Park, here's the third baseman, Richie Palacios. Richie Palacios. The 1 1. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Up the middle, Cruz to first, but it pulls him off the bag. That's a play you expect your shortstop to make pretty much every time. Pretty routine. Hard to tell if he didn't get a great grip on it or the mechanics on him just broke down, but that gives this offense an extra out to work with. And now it's Jose Siri. Swing and a high fly ball left field. Reynolds makes the play. Ben Wortvet next to hit for the Rays. This is a guy who is very highly regarded defensively. Fun to watch him control stuff behind the plate. Good game caller. Good at framing, but it's that big arm that really stands out. That one pulled foul. When you got a catcher like this guy with a big arm like that behind the plate, it really shuts down the running game. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. And now it's Ahmed Rosario. And he deals. When you have a catcher that can throw like that, a pitcher doesn't have to worry as much about the slide step. He can keep his mechanics intact and have a better opportunity of getting that hitter out with a swing and miss. That one close, rule the ball. And now three and one. Palacios off of first with two away. Next offering in there for a strike. Three balls, two strikes. And the righty deals. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. T 
two outs. Slides, but he can't come up with it. Lead runner touches second, headed for third. And now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Well, that was one of those high percentage advantage counts where batting averages are just so much higher. Just a simple ground ball the other way. They've had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in play, and just hope it finds a hole. Yandy Diaz now. Hit in the air, right field. Sawinski makes the catch. And that's the third out. So the Rays strand a pair, but they hold a 1-0 lead. Bottom of the inning, here's the second baseman, Nick Gonzalez. The second baseman, Nick Gonzalez. The pitch. Swing and a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Here's Rowdy Telez. And the right-hander deals. Bounce to the left side, and it goes just foul. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Home team down a run. The Rays leading on the solo homer. Got him swinging. Good late cut for the strikeout there. That thing really got in on him, man. You know, the cutter isn't really a huge swing and miss pitch most of the time because it's not really meant to move a whole lot. You're just trying to miss the big part of the barrel and maybe get some weak contact. But that one right there did a whole lot more than that. That was a really good pitch. Now batting key Brian Hayes. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Had him out front for strike three. Well, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, so they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him into scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. Now it's going to be Connor Joe. Just missed. Three ball. Jack Sawinski to bat next. That one is inside ball four. And I mean, oh, so close. Not what he wanted to do there, Boo. That keeps this inning alive and gives this offense a good chance to cut into their deficit. Now it's the right fielder, Jack Sawinski. The Rays leading by a run, bottom half of inning number two. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Man, I'm pretty impressed out there on the mound right now. I mean, these are tough spots where Pitchers really got to bear it out. Those last two pitches were well executed. Two on, two outs. Got him swinging on the curveball. And that is the inning. He's in a tough spot. Had to make a great pitch. Did it. Got the strikeout. Gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. Set for the start of the inning. Lau at the plate. The second baseman, Brandon Lau. Late that time, and it's strike two. I think he was sitting off speed there. And another ball. The pitch. 
and a pop off right side foul territory catcher tosses the mask settles under it makes the grab one away. The first baseman number 17. Isak. And now the first baseman Isaac Paredes. One out base is empty. The one one is fouled off. Line drive base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. These hitters today are so great with handling velocity. They're seeing high speeds day after day and a nice job of turning that one around. Josh Lowe getting ready to hit. Right hander kicks deals. That one fouled off. Swing and a miss. And there's two down. You know, the danger with the slider is leaving it out over the heart of the plate and getting contact on it. If you're going to miss, you're going to miss towards the corners, not in the middle. Right there, he does a great job with hard break at the end. He ran it inside. Very difficult to do anything when you're tied up like that as a hitter. Now it's Randy or Rosarena. Here comes a pitch. That's and a another ball. ball. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Paredes off of first with two away. Swings through that. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now. Doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. And they'll do it again. Two outs. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Some high cheese for strike three. One left for Tampa, but they still lead it one nothing. We go to the last of the third. Here's the Pirates catcher now. Yasmani Grandal. Righty delivers. Right through there for a strike. That one in the dirt. Ball two. And that's down and away. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. 3-2. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Puts it away for the out. Now the seventh fielder. So the Pirates batting order turns over. And now the center fielder, Andrew McCutcheon. The Rays up by a run here in the last half of the third. Swing and a miss, and he was fooled. One ball, two straight. Off the plate, two and two. One down, base is empty. Still two and two after the foul ball. Out to short, Rosario. Now the throw to first on the run. And that is out number two. The left fielder, number 10, Ryan Reynolds. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Brian Reynolds. The pitch. 
That's ball two. Two balls, one strike. Oh, he doesn't three. get the call. And that's ball three. Called strike, a sinker at the bottom of the zone. Three and two now. Gets a piece and stays alive. Two out, space is empty. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Nothing doing here for Pittsburgh. They're down, one nothing. And welcome back to the ballpark. Now the third baseman, Richie Palacios. The wind of the pitch. Out to short. Cruz. Throws the first in time. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Jose Siri next to hit for the Rays. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. One down, base is empty. Fights that one away, still one and two. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Foul ball, another 2-2 upcoming. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Well, that right there is just a pitcher's pitch. Tailing away from the hitter, lowing away with some good action at the end. You know, even if he gets the bat to that ball, it's probably just a weak ground ball to the opposite side. I tell you what, that's a tremendous two-strike pitch. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first-pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but he can never predict baseball. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And it's a 1 2 3 inning. Rays held in check here, but they lead it 1 to nothing. And we're back. John Chabi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, O'Neill Cruz. And a pitch. Ball through. You know, these Pirates, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. So many of their outs have come from weak contact on pitches. They're chasing outside of the strike zone. You can't do much of anything with those locations, and that's been true again today. Gets it to first. One up, one down. Nick Gonzalez, the next Pirate to hit. And as a pitcher, when the hitters are swinging at everything, you feel no need to challenge inside the zone. You just keep working the corners and expanding that strike zone and beyond, and they just keep eating right out of your hand. And a pitch. Still two and two after the foul ball. The why to kick the pitch. In the air to left center. Siri sizing this one up. He makes the grab. And there are two outs. And now it's Rowdy Telez. Two down, nobody on. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. And that one lifted in the air center field. Siri in position. He's got it. That is the inning.
Back here in Pittsburgh. Ready now for the fifth inning. Now up for Tampa Bay, Ahmed Rosario. That's out to center field. McCutcheon after it. Brings it in, and there's one down. Up next for Tampa Bay, the designated hitter. Yandy Diaz, Diaz, next to hit for the Rays. Ball to strike. Now a high fly ball out to left center. It falls in, and that's a base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Now Tried to get inside on him, but he was ready for it. Just kept his hands wow. in and turned on the pitch. Quick bat through the zone. And now it's Brandon Lau. And here it comes. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. At the belt and fires. Foul ball still a one and two count. Man at first one away. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. Picks up strikeout number seven. And here's the first baseman, Isaac Paredes. Swings through that one out in front that time. He normally does damage on that pitch in that location. Just a swing and a miss there. I don't think you want to throw it again, though. And deals. Good Whoa. eye in that spot. Well, I, I think he's trying to get a feel for where that one missed. I mean, it could have gone either way, but he looked a little shocked for a second there. Two outs. Three. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Third out. The Rays strand just the one, but they're on top, one nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. At the plate for Pittsburgh, Key Brian Hayes. Base hit right field. Off to a good start with a leadoff down. Dominant performance for him today, Boo. Just two hits allowed so far. No runs across either. And he's had an answer for just about every hitter he's faced. So I don't think this hit is going to knock him off his stride too much. No outs. Runner at first. And the batter now, Connor Joe. Home team down a run. Last half of inning number five. Out towards left center. Siri sizes this one up. Pulls it in for the out. Now batting right fielder. Jack Sulwinski. And now the right fielder, Jack Sulwinski. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning ending double play. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Yasmani Grandal up to hit. That one ripped. Fair ball. Hayes around second, headed for third. And that'll put runners at the corners with two away. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of the struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game, but all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. So the batting order turns over, 
Andrew McCutcheon, the next Pirate to hit. And that one is inside. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Two on, two outs. And that's off the inside edge. They're now three and one. The pitch. This one belted deep left field on its way. Gone. A gigantic blast. And they take the lead. It's 3-1. Listen to these fans. This place is absolutely buzzing right now. You can feel the energy all the way up here in our broadcast booth. But with a 3-1 count, a hitter is looking to do damage. Not just a single, not just a double, not even a triple. You're trying to go deep. And right there, an outstanding approach. Attack that baseball and hit it out of here. So two down. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Brian Reynolds. That one finds the zone, and it's one and two. That misses off the outside edge. Meanwhile. Activity in the bullpen. Jason Adam up and throwing. Davinsky getting cranked up as well. Two down, nobody on. This to third. This looks like extra bases. Around first and hustling for second. The throw in. He's there. It's a two out double. O'Neill Cruz, the next Pirate to hit. Comes up empty. That's strike two. One ball, two strikes. Righty to the plate. On the ground to third. On to first. That ends the inning, and they limit the damage. Cannonball coming. And this is now a 3-1 ball game. You're dialed into the show. We're back, and they make a change to start the sixth. The new pitcher, Jared Jones. Still a lot of game left, and this game could go either way. So this is a big opportunity for him to get some important outs and try to help carry this lead into the later innings. And a pitch. Falling behind 2-1. and one. Action in the pen down there. Colin Holderman loosening up in case he's called upon by Derek Shelton. Majinski also throwing. That that's one misses, three. and that's ball three. <laughs> Left hand batter waits. Swings and misses, struck him out. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error, but some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. Here's the left fielder, Randy Arozarena. On the ground right side, and that's a base hit.
the third base. He was definitely late on that pitch, but he didn't get beat. He got the bat on plane and just kept his hands tight to shoot it down the first baseline for the knock. And stepping in for the Rays, Richie Palacios. And a pitch. And that's downstairs and outside. With the tying run at the plate. And we're the top half of the sixth. Jones picks the first. The no, Rosarena dives back. Swing and a miss. Slider right there. Some heat there at 98 miles an hour. Not the best location with the fastball on strike three, but when you're pumping high 90s, you get away with some of those. More margin for error. You know, the fastball has become such a huge strikeout pitch in the sport. And I think a lot of it has to do with all the attention and emphasis on improved spin rates. These fastballs are just exploding out of the pitcher's hands and jumping through the zone. One ball, two strikes. And he deals. And now the count is even. The only adjustment he needs to make is his target. If you aim at the outside corner, that slider's going to end up way off the plate. Perhaps look a little more down the middle, and you get it right where you want it. Got it by him for the K. One hit, one left. To the bottom of the six we go. Four, five, six coming up. It's the Pirates three, the Rays one. for the bottom of the sixth and there's a new pitcher on the mound Jason Adam and he's done a great job keeping the ball in the park this year the numbers stack up with some of the best in the game now it's the second baseman Nick Gonzalez the second baseman Nick Gonzalez One, two. Two balls, two strikes. Wouldn't Three chase two. that time. Stack center field. Could be extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he greets the new arm from the bullpen with a double. Man, those are the types of hits where you don't feel any vibration in your hands whatsoever. Such a good feeling. You'll often hear the phrase short to it, long through it. And that's a great example of it right there. Got the barrel in the hitting zone early, squared it up with the well-timed swing, and came away with a beautiful line drive in the center field. So a man aboard. Rowdy Telez, the next pirate to hit. Man at second. Fouled off. He was late. Kicks and fires. On the ground. It's in and out of his glove. And he's going to make it to first. And we'll see how they score. Up next for the Pirates, Key Brian Hayes. When you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Hey. Count one and two. This guy plays third base like he's a shortstop, and he welcomes the difficult play, can throw from so many different angles, and makes really tough plays look very easy. Three. Swings through that one, it's a strikeout. Thought it was a pretty good pitch. Top of the strike zone. We're seeing more fastballs in that location. Hitters, especially with two strikes, have to be ready to pull the trigger. At 
to play. Connor Joe. Right handed reliever. And a big swing and a miss. So, what are the skills you look for that make a really good defensive third baseman that elite? Well, Boog, one of the things I think about immediately are just the feet. Does he have good feet? Is he able to quickly react? And when you have good feet, you've got soft hands. And soft hand defenders are able to make tough plays look easy. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, I think he was waiting on the changeup right there, and he got it. It just drifted too far in on him. I think that pitch is just a little more out over the plate. Probably squares it up, but instead, he's going to have to go take a seat. Righty delivers. And now two balls and a strike. Gonzalez on second. Telez on at first with two down. Next offering in there for a strike. And the count is even two and two. The pitch. And that's in the dirt. Yasmani Grandal waits on deck for Pittsburgh. And the right hander deals. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. So they strand a pair. We're through six full. It's the Pirates three, the Rays one. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Colin Holderman. Well, he's a big-time strikeout guy out there. This season, averaging more than one per inning. And now the catcher for the Rays, Ben Wortvet. Ben Wortvet. The pitch. That's Up down and in. And that one fouled off. And a curve is down and in. Ball four. He missed down low. Got a great back and forth and that at bat. He had to lay off some really close pitches and somehow, though, he found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Working down to the zone to start the at bat, looking for that double play ground ball. Yeah, back to back sinkers there. He's looking for some weak contact or to get this hitter to roll over. Now, as a hitter, you have to be really disciplined. Don't look down because you'll end up chasing the ball down. Set your sights high, maybe you get a mistake. Now he gets away from Grandal. And the runner holds. That's a pretty nasty pitch right there. I call it a power curveball in the 80s. It's got so much spin on it, and you really don't have a lot of time to sit back and watch what it's going to do before you have to commit. It was a good one for the swinging strikeout. So the lineup flips over. to the batter now, Yandy Diaz. Tying run at the plate. Turned on, but that's foul down the third baseline. Just misses there. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. And now it's filled up. Well, on this count, runner not known for his speed, but I think you got to put him in motion. Try to avoid a double play here, Booth. Brandon Lau. Up next. 
The tying run at the plate. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Right-hander kicks, deals. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. And there's a hit. They fired in quickly, so it's first and second with only one away. You know, I was watching his rounds during batting practice today. So impressed with his ability to let the ball travel, go back up the middle and the other way. Sometimes when you step in the box during the game, you get a little anxious and you get away from that. But Pirates with a new arm on the mound, Dennis Santana. He doesn't get a lot of strikeouts compared to other relievers, so he relies on getting that soft contact and the defense doing the work behind him. They'll have to be on their toes with him on the ball. One down. Now the number two hitter, Brandon Lau. So the tying run at second. That one missed. At the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boo. Here comes a pitch. Ball three. Way to lay off that pitch down. Isaac Paredes waiting for a turn at the plate. And the right hander's 3 1. Fastball for a strike. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Too low, ball four, and he's walked another. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boo. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. Isaac Paredes next to hit for the Rays. And things could change quickly here with one swing. All loaded up. Dangerous hitter at the plate. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. Line to right, base hit. In comes the run from third. It's 3-2. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side, and the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Next to bat will be the Rays' four-hitter, Josh Lowe. Next offering is in for a strike. One out. The go-ahead run is at second. Stays alive. Light drive. Squeezes in. Runner tags for home. A big run scores on the sack fly. And this game is tied in the seventh. Sometimes that can be a little tough to score on. It was hit so hard that getting back to the bag, the tag, takes a little bit of time by the time that outfielder catches it. But a really good job of getting that run in from third. So first and second with two outs. Now the left fielder, Randy Arozarena. Two outs. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Heading for the plate. Here comes the throw. And he's safe at the plate as they take the lead. It's four to three. Well, that was an important at bat this game. So a great job there stepping up to the challenge. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from. And there's just no one there to knock it down. So here comes the big lefty Aroldis Chapman to the mound. And we all know about his slider. It's just filthy, man. And one of the better ones in the game, I'd say. Spin rate's very high, and it just breaks a ton. First and second, two outs. Richie Palacios digs in now. Two on, two outs. Swing and a miss struck him out. Inning ends, and that stops the bleeding. So they get three and jump ahead late.
Seventh inning stretch time. It's the Rays four and the Pirates three. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh. Chris Davinsky. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect a tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Well, one run game, and now up to the plate, Yasmani Grandal. Looking to get the tying run on base. Paredes. He takes it on his own. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. That play won't be trending on social media later on, but it's still important to execute it to perfection. This game is a lot harder than it looks, partner. Back to the top of the lineup, and now it's Andrew McCutcheon. And a pitch. And a count one and two. Holding on to a one-run lead here at the bottom of the seventh. Swing and a ball popped up. Paredes should have this one. He makes the catch, and there's two down. The left field, number 10, Ryan. And now, Brian Reynolds. One one now. That's inside. And another ball. O'Neill Cruz next to bat for the Bucks. Two down, nobody on as the Rays try and punch back down a run. Swing and a miss struck him out. And one, two, three go the Pirates. Score holds at 4 3. Back here at PNC Park, stepping in, Jose Siri. Chapman now, one run game. So now one and two. One ball, two frames. Swing and a miss. The hat trick. And one away. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. And now the catcher comes up to him. Ben Workvet. One down, base is empty. Yep, that ball and that's out. outside. Two balls and a strike. The pitch. That no. one misses. Three and one. On the ground, right side. Fires over to first. Two up, two down. Up next for Tampa Bay, the shortstop, Ahmed Rosario. Ahmed Rosario next to hit for the Rays. Chris, his skill set straight out of the mid 80s. Good contact, not much power, and he could run. He always uses the wheels to his advantage. His biggest challenge in this day oh, and right age now. is to not get caught up in trying to hit home runs because so many people are. Here's a 2 1. Right through there for a strike. I think baseball's starting to understand that those guys are valuable like they once were. They need them in this game today. Next offering is down low. Good spot there, but didn't get the strike at the knees and doesn't seem too convinced by the call out there on the mound as he tries to get a better sense of the umpire strike zone. Two down, nobody on. Base hit.
Oh, just a total nightmare for lefties. I'd be very surprised to see that match up again. Nice line drive to the pull side right there, but he didn't spin off of it. That's the key. You still have to extend through the baseball in order to hit a line drive like that. Next to hit, Yandy Diaz. One ball, two straight. and misses it's a strikeout the high heat too much on that one one left for Tampa but they hold on to a 4-3 lead back now new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth Colin Poche these are the spots where relievers really make a name for themselves late and close there's not much margin for error but at the same time there's a reason they're put in these situations at the plate for Pittsburgh, O'Neill Cruz. On the ground to third. Sends it across the first, and that's one away as the leadoff man is out in the eighth. That's why you hunt the lines on the corners late in the ball game like this. Position perfectly. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Nick Gonzalez. And now the lefty and a foul ball left side. Trying to hold a one run lead here, the bottom half of the eighth inning. In the air, left field. The Rosarena moving under it. Snags it for the second out. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. Yeah, that's too high. Going to put good velocity in the head of the hitter. He's got to get it ready early and then change speeds. Keep him off balance. That's the goal. Swings through that, and it's a strikeout. And a nice inning of work there as he sets him down. One, two, three. Bucks go down quietly. Still down a run. It's 4-3. We're back. It's the top of the ninth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Carmen Majinski. Well, he's been hit pretty hard at times this season, as you see with the big ERA. So this is an important outing for him to get on the right track. Well, one run game. Brandon Lau now at the plate. Brandon Lau. And a good eye there. Ripped to short. Sends it to first. Now one gone in the ninth. Fastball groove right down the middle. Usually a lot of damage done with that pitch. A hard grounder, but he wanted to get that ball in the air. Maybe drive it into the gap. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss. And the count, one and two. Movement in the bullpen. David Bednar preparing to come on if needed. One, two now. Lined in the left center, base hit. 